Hello everybody, I am Nate, this is Nader Games, and we are here with one of the big talkabouts of, of Game Jolt right now. This is the demo for Ira. I know this is a point-and-click adventure, so it might be a little bit long. I mean, I've looked around, it looks like it's about a 40 or so minute demo. Um, so I'm probably going to cut this up into two. Uh, but it might take me a little longer than normal, because if you watch my videos, you know that I'm not that good at point-and-click adventure games. But we're going to try. The, the screenshots I saw looked awesome. Everyone's talking about this game, and it is episodic. This is chapter one. Uh, demo for chapter one, or it's all of chapter one, I'm not sure. But we're going to find out what's going on. Uh, everyone who's played this game loves it so far. Um, like I said, not very good. This is pre-alpha gameplay. Uh, not very good at point-and-click adventure games. I like them. I'm just not very good at them. So we'll see. Unless it's well done like the captain. Oh, the smell of rocket fuel hangs in the air, even this far outside of town. Uh, the year is 1932, and summer fades over the land surrounding pilgrimage as launch day fast approaches. Anticipation fills the air, and the world's gaze is drawn to the tiny town as the final trains make their way into the station. Unless it's well done like the captain. I really enjoyed the captain. The town is a buzz to launch the Halcyon only weeks away, and pilgrimage will once again be thrust into the world's spotlight. Earth's first interstellar vessel will depart from the pilgrimage launch center, traversing the void of interstellar space in order to explore the mysteries of the lithic system. Don't forget to pick up your viewing tickets for the launch. There might be a few left if you have the pocketbook. <clears throat> In other news, the Martian mining <laughs> season is once again upon us, and many listeners have noticed the influx of seasonal workers in town. Keep in mind that the world is watching, so please, let's all be on our best behavior, and save the hooliganism and rabble-rousing for the mines. We don't need any incident. Okay, so we've got an important launch coming up. Sounds like that the mixture of human and alien is relatively normal, maybe? Really couldn't tell. I mean, so far, first impressions, this looks awesome. Banjo player. Well, looks like it'll be just me and you riding the rest of this line, pal. Uh, oh, okay, so we've got choices, too. Um, so, why? What's the next town? Next up to line is Pilgrimage, the last town for 50 miles. Top lock, you and me ought to be staring clear there about now. Pilgrimage sounds like the place that's what I want to be. What's so wrong? Uh, what's so wrong with it? Well, you're not going to find any work there. That's for sure. Not unless you plan on hauling it up to Mars. Intellico owns that town. Between the miners headed from Mars and that hollow scene. Doesn't seem like the kind of place I'd like to get caught up. Hey, I'm not in this because I'm awesome at voice acting, okay? The last ride out to Mars leaves soon, so miners are crawling all over that town. I know work's scarce, but damn. To be desperate enough to sell your soul to Intellico and go mine in the red sand. Poor oh, bastards. Nobody will even notice them, though. Everybody's got their eyes on the hollow scene. All those rich folks heading into town for launch day. Intellico will be sure to keep tops like us out of the way. It's all just profit for Intellico. They don't care who has to suffer to make a buck. This has had a pretty deep story it looks like too. I wonder if your dialogue choices are affect anything or if they're just kind of static. Pilgrimage, gateway to the stars gateway to nothing if you ask me the whole thing's a sham folks there are as poor as anyone else it's all a show if you're living in that town then Intellico good as owns you nope there's nothing for us there in pilgrimage that town is a dead end all right so it looks like I'm probably getting off at pilgrimage that's my guess anyways like I said, I'm, I'm not here for my, my voice acting skills. I'm just trying to have fun with it, all right? If you're going to judge me, that's fine. 
but at least judge me in the comments so I can help judge myself back. Deal? Deal. All right. All right, so where are we at? What are we doing? Still miles from town, a tiny farmhouse sits amongst the fields, a place a young boy named Ira calls home. Dad. Oh, Ira. Hi there. I didn't hear you come in. All right, looks like we're actually going to be in-game here. I'm just finishing up the car here. Did you need anything? Mom told me to come out and ask if he is. Is there anything I can do to help? Oh, thank you, Ira. Sure could use a hand, an extra hand. I'm just trying to get the car back up and running before I run out of time here. Before I leave, I mean. I can't leave you and your mother here all winter with the car breaking down every couple of miles. Aren't you excited to go to Mars again? Or when are you leaving? Well, no, it's not like that, Ira. It's hard work, and it just feels very far from home. It isn't nearly as glamorous as all that hollow scene business going on. I know you're interested in all that, all the buzz around a ship headed to a new star, but mining on Mars is just work. At least the car will be in good shape before I go. Could you bring me that wrench from above the workbench? Okay. Alright, so, so far it looks like it's not the uh, kind of game where you click on something and then you have the eyeball and then you have, you know, interact and ten choices when you click on something. It's just, here, click on this. Yeah, see, that that's nice. So far, anyways. Just a few turns here. I love this style. Alright, now I just need a fuel line to replace this one here. I think there's one out in the barn. Could you run out and see if you could find it? Uh, I love the art style. It's uh, it's really great, actually. I'm trying to think of what it rem reminds me of. The night air was crisp, a cool wind moving in from the north, catching up the last summer's warmth. Need to go to the barn. Oh, I'm a running. Where's the barn? Well, it must not be that way. So what's it tell me if I look at the gate here? The road winds away from the house through miles of farmland into the town of Pilgrimage, home to Earth's largest space launch facility. Okay. So we've at least colonized Mars in the sense that we're mining it. So this must be in some sort of future. No, go that way. Where's the barn? But it looks great. It looks super crisp and super clean. Dad bought this before he married Mom. He said when he comes home from mining in the spring, he'll teach me to drive it. The hose from the gas tank is exactly like the one we need to finish the car. Let's leave it alone for now, because he did specifically tell me to go check the barn. And I would hate to ruin the tractor. The darkness in the barn is thick, but moonbeams through the cracks give just enough light to illuminate a few boxes tucked in the corner. Something shifts in the upper loft, but it's out of view, and concealed by shadows. Uh... Let's call. Ira's voice is swallowed up by the darkness. There is no response. Search the boxes and pretend we didn't hear anything. My scurry out as Ira feels around in the boxes. He tosses aside old oil-soaked rags, and his fingers quickly find the soft rubber hose. Ira tugs firmly, but is lodged between some rusted bits of junk and won't come free. He pulls again, harder this time, but the hose is lodged tightly. With one final heave, the hose comes free, but the knocks the box to the ground and says its contents bouncing into the darkness. Ira's fist flatly closed around the hose, his hand flies upwards with force, bumping an old radio concealed by the shadows, jostling it to life. Ira looks around the darkness in the barn and is overcome with a feeling of unwelcomeness. He hurries out the door, hose in hand. And the, uh, the exposition is actually kind of great. Now see, now I went in there, I, I found the hose, so I didn't have to ruin the tractor. Which was kind of the point. Alright, let's go give this back to old Pop. And the loading is pretty minimal too. Oh, this damn thing. What? Oh, the hose. Right. Hang on a second. These damn threads are stripped again. 
cheap Intellico trash. They make this garbage to last about a month, I swear. Biggest company in the world, so the bastards think they can do whatever the hell they want. They send us off to sweat and bleed on Mars for next to nothing. If it wasn't for the Union, bad as things are now, before the Union we'd have a death every day. Still, most of us can barely afford to buy gear that isn't about to fall apart. Can you believe that? We mine up them on that godforsaken planet and we have to buy our own gear. It's a miracle we don't all die up there, but still, a lot of us do. A lot of good men don't come back. There are too many widows in this town because of that damn company. Son of a bitch. This is all gone to hell now. Let's see, it's not so bad, are you at least working right? Are you upset because mom's getting sick? Or, uh, so dad's gonna go off to mining and mom is sick. Let's see if we can find out what's going on with mom. Dot, dot, dot. Well, I can't. It's fine, Ira. Everything's going to be fine. I just can't think about that. Not right now. We're going to be all right, all of us. Why don't you head in? Your mother might need a hand with dinner. And I think they're doing a special about the hollow scene tonight on TV. You don't want to miss that, right? Go on inside, Ira. I just need to spend some more time out here getting this thing back together. Okay, Dad. Ira, I love you, son. Alright, so we have completely ruined Dad's day. So let's see. Is there anything else I can interact with here? Doesn't look like it. Let's check out the mining gear. Red Dust still coached from the mining gear after a summer in storage. Soon it will be a world away. The only thing between Iris Father and the harsh Martian cold. Alright. Got plenty of wood for this for the winter. But yeah, this this game looks great. This this is awesome. Ira? Oh, I didn't know you were asleep. That's alright, Ira. Not quite sleeping. Just tired. I was going to watch that special on the hollow scene with you, remember? I just... Give me a few minutes. I need to wake myself up. Is everything okay? Of course, everything is fine, Ira. It's just been a hard week, with your father getting ready to leave and all. It's nothing for you to worry about. Why don't you go watch your special? You can tell us all about it at dinner. Oh, I never did start dinner cooking. Could you go and do that for me? All you have to do is put the pot on the stove. Everything is made. After you do that, you can go get your father so we can all eat. Okay, I'll put dinner on and then go get Dad. That would be so lovely. Thank you, Ira. I'll see you out there soon. I love you. All right, so things aren't things aren't great in the uh, the old Ira home here. We're going to we're gonna we're gonna figure it out. Let's skip the attic for now. Let's let's get dinner going. Stew. That is a very one-sided, asymmetrical kitchen. Oh, and it's doing everything for me. See, this this is great. I, I can do point-and-click adventures like this. Now that I've got the supper cooking, I should go get Dad from the garage. Nothing to look at. No, okay. Oh, go back, go back, go back. There, there was something I needed to read. The medical terminology was too foreign for Ira to make any sense of it, but he could read his parents' faces when they returned to the doctor with these scraps of paper. The words were meaningless. The only option was to wait. Well, I'd like to know. I, I could probably decipher some of it. So I can't make myself run. Let's, uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna... Oh. TV went out. Ugh. Let's go get Dad. Oh. Door's open. What's the going on?
Did bad things happen in the time I just went to make this, the food? What the hell? The sound of water floods the senses, washing away an old reality, leaving behind only the shell of Ira's former life. All I did was make the food! Memories ring out like echoes, fading in a slow procession of years gone by. The past decays and the future remains unseen, time pressing forward blindly, unaware of its mortal passengers. The flow of hours turning into decades carries Iris down its twisting streams. I like that you can skip the dialogue, you're not forced to keep it on the screen the whole time. It carries his father to distant Martian mines. Tharsis Fields in Teleco. I don't even know why I have my hand on the keyboard. It sweeps up his mother, his home, and his bearing. Well, things got things got real pretty quick here. And it carries Ira to places he has never known. Alright, so mom is sick. Dad's on Mars. Ira feels finds what feels like stability washing ashore on the ridness of a moment lost and alone but a voice rises from within it draws him back to the house like a sign of hope through murkiness of its reality they should have called this ira the uh the swarm of metaphors all right so everything from here is gone and we're just going to ignore that the paintings are gone so we are. The call grows louder, guiding Ira through his... Oh, shoot, I clicked. Okay, now the bed is gone. Oh, I'm old now. I didn't even notice. Oh. Okay, so let's just, let's just head upstairs. Looks like everything's gone from here. The inner voice is clear now. It draws Ira up the stairs, promising escape. A familiar feeling comes with the attic's stale air, but it is a fleeting. Okay, radio is the only thing I can interact with. So far, this seems almost like, less like a point-and-click adventure and more like an interactive movie. Which is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Lithic symbols back there. A distant voice rises through the radio static. Its tone is familiar, but the words are too muffled to make out. The sound is barely audible, but Ira finds comfort in the noise beneath the static. Closing his eyes, Ira focuses on the voice. Words reveal themselves. How can we know where we have been? Hmm. Only by looking backwards. It is where we have all come from that much is true. But knowing what has been is not knowing at all. Do you know where you will be? Nothing is certain, no way is set. One path. Only go where I've been before. Nothing is certain, no way is set. I like that. Your perspective is flawed, but you must know that. You wouldn't have come otherwise. You couldn't have come. Do you know where you are? Of course, you couldn't know, could you? Not in this way. Okay. Wake up. Things just got weird. Whoa. Symbols. The hell is that? Whoa. Ira's mind slips through the years, escaping time, caught up in the void. But the mind re-emerges, called back into the slow march of time after years of suspension. explanation Iris head throbs with pain he can barely focus on a single thought 
The room is familiar, but it is a distant memory. His mind is unable to recall why he knows the place or when he has been here. So are we not in the attic anymore? Oh. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut the video right in half here. Because like I said, it's about, from what I understand, about 40 minute demo. This is great. Uh, I'm going to just, you know, definitely make the next video right now. I'm way too sucked into the story at this point. So, uh, you know, kind of kind of hold your breath there. We'll get the second video, and uh, hopefully I won't keep you waiting too long. But um, this is Ira uh, Chapter 1 demo. If you liked it, give me a like. If not, let me know why. If you want to see more games like this and the other episode of Ira, definitely give me a subscribe. But for now, I am Nate. This is Nader Games. I will see you in the future.